we're chasing after excitement and we're, we're told that this is the, the, the best thing in the world is to be excited about something. Um, and I don't think it is, and I don't think it's the only thing that really uh, motivates people. I was uh, reading this whole article a while ago about this, um, about happiness, um, and these people were trying to do research into what makes people happy and what doesn't make people happy. And they kind of came to some interesting conclusions about about this and that. But one of the things they they, they tended to assume was that we um, we won't um, we won't do anything creative or um, productive unless we kind of feel there's going to be some reward at the end of it. But I really don't think that's the case. Um, in my own case, the things I do that are that that turn out to be most creative and productive, and are things I do because I'm interested in doing it. You know, I, I'm I want to do this this thing, and, and I do it, and it's not because I, I'm going to have a reward. And I think we kind of misplace um, values by saying, well, you know, if I do this, I'll get the reward. It's a common thing in Zen. You know, if I do this Zen for years, I'll get the reward of being enlightened or something. Um, but the only way to really do it is to just do it because you do it. Um, and if things uh, happen as a result of that, that's, that's nice. And uh, it's more about doing what you're doing at that particular moment. If there was a goal in doing Zazen, what would it be? Because a lot of Buddhist writers say ending suffering or dropping yeah. ego. The goal is a million dollars. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ending suffering and all of that. Um, I mean, you you when you when you start out when you're doing the the practice to begin with, there there's always a motivation for doing it. Um, you know, I'd read uh, Three Pillars of Zen and read about people's enlightenment experiences. So so uh, for for a certain, to a certain degree, when I first do, started doing zazen, I was doing it so that, you know, I would have one day this great enlightenment experience, you know, hoping for it, still waiting for that, but, um, so there's always kind of a motivation, but um, at some point, the, the goal, see, when you're talking about a goal, it's, it, you, you kind of already set up um, I'm not trying to be critical of you in particular because everybody does this, but you kind of set up something that that uh, you already stepped out of what the whole point of the practice is because the goal is always somewhere in the future, um, but you're never living in the future and you're never living in the past. You're only living right here, and the goal, I suppose, of of zazen practice is is to learn to live right here, is to, is to stay with. Uh, what this is, because um, when you first hear that, I know when I first heard that, I thought that was a real depressing idea, because like, there's got to be something better than this, you know, jeez, um, this is, this is cheesy, this is just, this is just nothing, but, but there's got to be some, you know, great reward or some, you know, wonderful knowledge or whatever, but but when you actually learn to stay with what's actually happening here and now, the, it, it, it'll eventually dawn on you that this is the best thing. Um, that there's nothing better, uh, no matter what it happens to be that you're, you're going through. Um, and there's nothing better because it's real. And everything else that you imagine would be better isn't real. It's just imagination. Um, you know, this always happens. One of the things these guys who, who research happiness found is that um, whenever people uh, get something that they've been working for, when they, when they actually reach some goal that they've been trying to achieve, um, it just becomes part of the background. So, um, so that once you get the thing, it just becomes something you have, you know? Once you get the Mercedes or whatever you're... you're you're uh, after, it, it becomes just something you have and it becomes just, um, it becomes less exciting. Um, but you're still left with this drive to get a thing, 
somewhat, no matter what it is. Um, and so what you're doing in zazen practice is kind of learning to get rid of that, that drive to get something that's not here. Um, because as I said, even if you get that thing, if you, if you realize you get a million dollars, then you're like, okay, well, I got a million dollars. No, this is why, you know, in, you know, because now living in Hollywood and dealing with these, these people and all that, I, I, you get to see this, this, this phenomenon of people who just have uh, ridiculous amounts of material uh, things. You, know, you, just, you just drive around the city and you can see evidence of, 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 of things that have got, just gone beyond uh, anything that makes any sense at all. Uh, where, where people have kind of driven themselves and succeeded in getting things that, that you know, once you've got this much, you can't even possibly spend all that money. You know, if you lived to be a thousand years old, you could never spend that much money. Um, but you're still driving to get more and more and more because, because the people who are, who are trying to do this haven't gotten rid of that haven't found the, the capacity to get rid of that drive to get more and more and more and more. So, you know, you become successful, but then you become more and more and more, and it just becomes kind of a ridiculous thing. Were you, was your hand up, or are you just, you're just waving at a fly? <laughs> <laughs> um, granted, you know, the constantly thinking about, oh, if I, you know, it's like, you know, if I, uh, I, I got a, I made a hundred dollars and I felt, you know, pretty good about it. If I make a million, I must feel that much better and, yeah. and things like that. And then you get people in the, you know, very rich people in the Betty Ford clinic because they, you know, got what they wanted and they t tried so hard to get and realized that life wasn't any better than it yeah. was when they were, you know, maybe it was harder because now they can't go to the store and go shopping without yeah. people screaming at them. Yeah. Uh, so then they, a lot of, you know, very successful people kind of, especially in the entertainment industry, yeah, you know, yeah. go a little crazy and end up drinking too much or whatever. But besides that kind of thing, you know, obviously there has to be some kind of balance because one thing when I've talked about that whole kind of idea with friends of mine, the things that come up, it's like, well, if you're only ever thinking about now, does that mean that you never, you know, like, you know, like, it, do anything for your own future. It's like you never work or save money, you just spend all your money right now because now is the only thing that exists. And it's like, well, no, that would be yeah, stupid. Uh, you know, it's like, so where is that kind of line? You know, like, if well, I, I mean, cut down this tree, I can build a house and in the winter I'll be warm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, things like that, things that make sense, you, you just keep doing, you know. Uh, you don't. You don't spend all your money just because there's only now. Because that, that's kind of just a way of, of thinking, too. Um, you got to be practical. And like I said before, you know, the only reason, the only way we could have this Zen retreat is if we, if we sit and plan and, and work it all out and, and try to figure out how to you know, get everybody together and get everything together uh, to have it. And, you know, that's, that's part of the practice as well. So, so it's, not, it's not that kind of a, a thing. Um, you still, there's still no reason to give up your ability to, to think and to plan and to, and to figure things out and to do stuff. Um, and you don't become just kind of a, a bump on a log. The people I know who are actually the most serious Buddhist practitioners are, you look at Nishijima Sensei, he's, he's like, you know, he's, he's trying to learn French now. You know, he's, the guy's what, 85, you know? And, and he even wrote about it, he was, I think he was writing some, some his blog or somewhere, he's saying, well, you know, even though I know I'll never be able to, to accomplish becoming a, a fluent in French, I still want to learn, uh, you know. So he's still just enjoying the practice of, of, of learning French, so he's, he's not stopping. Um, uh, so it's that, it's that kind of attitude, it's not, it's not just... Uh, um, What's the, what's the hedonistic sort of, you know, live for today, for tomorrow we may die. You know, it sounds a little bit like it might be like that, but that's not really the case. Um, it's more of a case of being, of being practical and doing what needs to be done at this moment. And, and, and the future kind of takes care of itself if you, um, if you pay close attention to what you're doing.